Yo, what is good, you guys? It is your boy Jason JV, and as you can see from the title, we're doing something a little bit different. Uh, this was a video series that um, I've been contemplating on doing, um, and this was uh, heavily inspired by Ryan Upchurch's um, "Behind the Lyrics." Uh, basically, it's the same thing. You know, it's it's a behind the lyrics series, but obviously, um, I decided to retitle mine so that way it's not a complete copycat. Like I said, this was inspired uh, by his video series, so. Uh, yeah, um, obviously mine is called Method to the Madness. You know what I mean? That's, that was a, a, a title that I was I was playing around with. And the more I thought about it, the more it just seemed to kind of fit. You know what I mean? Method to the Madness. So anyway, uh, so um, yeah, the first uh, song we'll, we'll be uh, digging into is going to be a, a song that I did that I mentioned in a, a recent video called uh, Ain't Dragging Me Down. Um, this is a song that um, I, I honestly, in all honesty, I mean... Take my words for whatever they are. You guys make your judgments, if you will. This was a song that I really did not want to make. Um, but this was a song I felt like I had to make. Because uh, this was about um, a situation between me and a former friend of mine. Uh, who's been ha having some real bad um, uh, anger management problems. Uh, and it got to a point to where I just... I, I couldn't take any, mo any more of his his drama, his bullshit, and so this is me just basically addressing the situation, um, but yeah, let's go ahead and um, I'll play the intro and then I'll kind of break down everything that I said in here and um, give you some insights as to what led up to this point. Yo, real talk, I didn't want to go here, but you kind of forced my hand, motherfucker. I'm sick of you. Blaming other people for the problems that you brought upon yourself. You need to grow up and be a fucking man, dude. I hope this track lights a fire under your ass, because you really need it. So, uh, what pushed me to, to use those words in the intro was, uh, there was a situation that involved a friend of mine, his name was Kenny. And uh, Kenny basically uh, had a job at O'Reilly. He was working there for pretty much all throughout the decade. Um, all throughout the previous decade, pretty much. I think he, he worked for them for like a good seven years, I think is what he said. Um, but anyway, uh, what happened was uh, he had a job uh, at, at O'Reilly, and he got fired from said job. I don't know why. I don't know what the deal was. Um, but yeah, he got fired, and he ended up getting a job um, at, at a arena at my old hometown of San Jose. Um, he got a job at the Shark Tank, <clears throat> or otherwise better known as the Sap Center. Uh, we call it the Shark Tank because obviously that's the home of the San Jose Sharks. Um, but anyway, I guess that job didn't work out either, and it was so bad for him that he walked out. And so um, he, and I guess he, he was coming back one day to collect his final check. And um, he didn't give me the full story on this, but I kind of have an idea as to what it could be. Doesn't mean that I'm right or wrong. I'm just this is just me speculating here. Um, but uh, he told me when he came back to collect his final check that uh, cops were called, and they basically questioned him um, there on site, and they took him into custody. I believe he said for a few hours, and they confiscated some of his digital devices. Um, I think he said like two laptops, um, some tablets. And uh, what have you, um, and it it had it had me thinking, had my, my my gears running in my head, and had me thinking like, okay, you were just there, okay, you leave, you came back to get your final check, cops are called, they take you in for a few hours, and then they confiscate your digital devices. What did they accuse you of? He wouldn't tell me, so I'm thinking it's something really serious. Like, could it be? Um, a, a, uh, uh, sexual thing? Did he rape somebody? Molested somebody? Is that what he's uh, being accused of? You know what I mean? Because I wasn't there, so I don't know. So I'm going to say, so I, I know I need to be more careful with my words, so I'm going to say maybe he was accused of raping somebody or molesting somebody. Who knows? It could be somewhere on, along those lines because why would cops uh, confiscate your digital devices? You know what I mean? Um, so anyway, um, he ended up getting his stuff back, his laptops, his tablets, whatever. He he got all that back, uh, I think, like, days later. And um, he posted on Facebook that he was going to take um, his bosses from his old job there at 
at the Shark Tank um, to court. He was going to take him to court. He was going to make a case out of it and fight in court. Um, but going back to his anger management issues, and this is where his anger gets the best of him, um, he decided to post about it on Facebook. He announced on Facebook that he was going to fight these guys in court. And um, he started popping off, you know, and let his anger get the best of him. And he was talking all kinds of shit and everything. And me just, you know, trying to be that, you know, the uh, good friend that I'm trying to be. I get onto his post and I'm telling him, dude, if you're going to fight these guys in court, if you're actually going to do this, then you need to watch what you say. You need to watch what you post on Facebook because uh, the opposition, they're going to look into your profile. They're going to watch, you know, what you post on Facebook, on Twitter, because he has a Twitter account. And um, I, he used to have a YouTube. I don't know if he still has it. But um, if he's posting on YouTube, they're going to look into that, too, because they're going to want to get a read on his character. You know what I mean? And if he's posting stuff like that's filled with anger and hatred and all this other negativity it's not going to work out in his favor. And, um, he, and then he lashed, lashed out at me and was like, dude, I'm already pissed off as it is. I don't need any of your fucking criticism, blah, blah, blah. With the whoop. And I'm like, dude, first of all, you need to chill the fuck out because I'm trying to be a friend here. I'm trying to save you from you. You know what I mean? I'm trying to help you win this case if you're going to go through with this. And if you can't see me do that as a friend, then um, I don't know what else to say or what I can do for you, um, but best of luck on your case, bro, and I basically took him off my Facebook, uh, because this was something that was that was building up over time, I mean, there's other issues too where uh, he posted up a, a, a post, it was a racist post, I'm not going to repeat exactly what, what it says, because this is not the time or the place, um, but yeah, he uh, called out a certain uh, race. I'm not going to say who, so don't please don't ask me who. Um, something about their facial features and stuff. And then me and one of his other friends, we had we got on there, and we were basically in agreement, And um, me and his, his other homie. <clears throat> and we were basically trying to tell him, like, dude, you need to watch what you say on social media. You know what I mean? Because uh, you never know who could be looking at this stuff. You know what I mean? Just because you put your profile on private... It doesn't mean that, you know, um, all the different offices of government can look into your profile. They really want to. They can. You know what I mean? Facebook has it where the police can look into your profile, regardless if you have it private or not. It doesn't matter. The police can look at what you post. So, uh, luckily, and he was, of course, you know, he was pissed off and, you know, lashed out at us. But he eventually took the post down and everything, which was smart. And, um... And uh, what what else was there? I mean, let's well let's get back into the song, and I'll give you the insights of where these lines came from. Yo, come get me, motherfucker! If you want JV, fuck with my head now. You ain't dragging me down. Hell to the na 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 na. Come get me, motherfucker! If you want JV, fuck with my head now. You ain't dragging me down. Hell to the na 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 na. Come get me, motherfucker. If you want JV, fuck with my head now. You ain't dragging me down. Hell to the na 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 na. Come get me, motherfucker. If you want JV, yup. All right, so that hook, um, as you guys can tell, I'm paying homage to both uh, Tupac's Hell Mary. And uh, Eminem's version of Hail Mary that he did with 50 Cent and Busta Rhymes. Um, and obviously, as you can tell from the hook, um, the beginning portion um, was uh, borrowed from uh, Eminem's version of Hail Mary, where he says, Come get me, motherfucker, if you want Shady. But instead of Shady, it's JV, me. So, because, you know, it's my song. And um, the rest of the hook, it's um, all original. You know, fuck with my head now. You ain't dragging me down. Hail to the na 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 na. Rather than just a straight na 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 na, um, I I figure you know because a lot of people you hear them say hell to the na, hell to the no, hell to the nope, whatever the case. I decided to incorporate that into the hook so that way there's less na 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 into the hook. You know what I mean? It makes it more original that way too. So uh, yeah, that's the story behind that. The intro, um, the first hook 
that kind of introduces the song. It wasn't originally planned that way. It was something that I kind of thought of on the spot because of the way that the beat was. You know what I mean? Or like before the beat kicks in, you hear the melody. So I figured, well, since it's just the melody, um, then I can start off as just me kind of singing, like introducing the hook to you guys. And then when the beat kicks in, then I could double it up and it'll be the official hook. So that was my thought process with the hook. Oh, I try to have you back, try to save you from all the cracks. And all I get in return are vicious attacks. Pretty self-explanatory here. It's basically what, what I told you earlier, you know what I mean? Um, I was trying to save this dude from, you know, saying more stupid shit than he needs to, you know what I mean? Trying to help him make life easier on himself, you know what I mean? He's already going through enough shit as it is, so I'm just trying to keep him from dogpiling more shit on top of, you know, what he already put himself through. Trying to save him from himself. Well, the more you see I had enough of that, you can kiss my ass, though that's facts. Yo, you got all the time to cope. Wallow in your misery, yeah, go hit him up. Again, pretty self-explanatory here. Uh, this is basically me just saying, you know, hey, I had enough, I'm done, whatever. You want to be miserable, you want to you know, enjoy bathing in that in that toxic energy that, that you got going on, by all means, bro, have at it, man. I, I'm just, I'm done. Oh, always bitching and crying about how you're always broke. You think it's the end of the road, like you lost all hope. This came from a post that I read where um, he posted something about how, you know, because the world is not fair to him. The world is, you know, people treat him like shit. You know what I mean? Why should he... You know, focus on changing and everything. Because the way I see it, what you bring into this world is what you're going to get out of it. You know what I mean? I believe that positive energy brings in positive results. Negative energy will only bring in negative results. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Man, you're doing too much dope. Yeah, I saw your little post about you drinking alone on New Year's Eve. Already lost one homie. Couldn't do a damn thing. I was busy, steadily grinding. Shitty feeling, knowing I could have lost another. Who was so close, just like a brother. And now you're on a level that's a whole nother. And so, uh, here's another one where uh, the homie that I was I was referring to, the one where I say we uh, already lost one homie. Uh, this was the homie by the name of Lamar Clayton. Uh, he, he was a rapper. He goes by the name of LC. Um, you might be able to find some of his stuff on YouTube because I, I think he had a YouTube and I remember finding uh, some of his songs on YouTube. So look up Lamar LC Clayton and you might find some of his stuff on YouTube. Um, as a matter of fact, I'll, I may check on here to see if I can find some of his songs and I'll do some reaction videos because he was actually a pretty dope MC. He's a Bay Area style, um, Bay Area bass style MC. Um, but yeah, and the story with him is that, um, back in 2011, um, he was, um, killed in a car accident. Um, he wasn't wearing his seatbelt. I'm sorry. I gotta tell the truth. I gotta tell like, like, like it is. He wasn't wearing his seatbelt. Um, he got into a wreck with another car and the impact was enough to, you know, throw him, um, uh, out through the windshield of his car. And he was basically in a, in a coma for, for about a week. Um, I went to go see him as much as I could. I, I think I only saw him, I want to say, at least three days out of the week, you know, because of my, my work schedule and everything. So I tried to see him as much as I could. The last day I went to go see him, I believe it was on a Thursday, and I couldn't go in there because uh, his parents were in there, and I guess they were deliberating as to what they were going to do with him. And so, yeah, the, the nurse was telling me, like, yeah, they're not allowing visitors right now. The parents are in there, you know, they're discussing what to do with with the body and i'm like oh god that, that and i kind of ignored that part because um i didn't want to you know they say expect the worst hope for the best expect the worst but i want to believe that you know he was going to pull through so i kind of ignored that last part of it and it wasn't until i got home was it when i got home no I, i'm sorry fast forward to the next day friday um kenny hits me up Kenny is the one that I'm rapping to on this song, um, in case I didn't mention it earlier. Um, he, he he had texted me and told me that, you know, hey man, L L Lamar passed away. Um, he passed away at this time or whatever, blah, 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 whoop, whoop. And it just hit me like like, like a ton of bricks, man. Because, um, you know, he, he, he was a cool dude. And uh, But anyway, uh, fast forward to, I think it was about... Was it a week? I, I want to say it was about a week later. 
uh, they were planning for like his funeral and things like that. And um, I had gotten sick. Um, <clears throat> I think I was sick with the cold or something. And um, I hit up Kenny and I asked him like, hey man, is it cool if I catch a ride with you to the, to the funeral so I can go pay my respects? I'm not really feeling well. I'm not really feeling up to driving. I don't have the energy for it. And um, he wanted to take his mom's Miata. And he decided that not only was he taking the mom's Miata, but he was taking a homie that he's been having issues with. Um, that so it which didn't make any sense to me. So I was just like, ah, whatever. And then I ended up missing uh, Lamar's funeral. And um, but <clears throat> post a, uh, an announcement on Facebook, letting my friends um, know that yeah, I'm sorry I couldn't be there. I, I was under the weather. You know what I mean. Um, really want to be there to pay my my respects. I uh, just want to say R.I.P. Lamar, you know what I mean? Um, you know, see you when I see you, you know what I mean? And so, um, so uh, yeah, um, uh, um, I, I kind of got over the whole misarrangement, whatever and all that. I mean, I was still kind of bothered. It bothered me for a little while, but eventually I just I just got over it. I was like, you know what, it's not really worth holding on to. I'm not one to hold grudges, just so you know. Um, I don't see the point of it. Um, but anyway... Um, it, um, it, it pissed me off because on New Year's Eve, Kenny missed New Year's Eve by a few days and he decided that he was going to make up for his New Year's and he wanted to, to drink. Well, I was at work and while I was at work, he was posting on Facebook about how he's drinking alone, he's getting his buzz on and everything and it, it pissed me off. It scared me and pissed me off at the same time because... You know, he's going through some shit right now, so obviously he's feeling depressed. And when when you're depressed, most of the time, you don't care when to say when. You know what I mean? You want to just get, you want to get faded. You want to get fucked up because you don't want to think about all the shit that you're going through. You know what I mean? You want to be happy. So, um, it, I, I got worried, you know what I mean? Because I'm like, what if he overdoes it? You know what I mean? And then I lose him too. And between him and Lamar... Um, Kenny was more like, like, like a brother to me because I'd known him for uh, like less than 15 years. Um, I've met him, Lamar, and my, and my girl that I'm with now. I met all three of them um, at, at, uh, at Kohl's. We all, we all used to work at Kohl's together. So, uh, yeah. And uh, Lamar, um, I got to hang out with him during my, my, my run at Kohl's. Um, I never got to really hang out with him after I left Kohl's. You know what I mean? Uh, so we kind of lost touch for a little bit, but I was always cool with him. He was always cool with me, you know, so he was more of a, of an, uh, acquaintance, uh, rather than a homie, a close homie like Kenny was. But, um, I still consider Lamar a homie because like I said, he was just a chill dude. You know what I mean? Very likable guy, very funny guy. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, let's get into more of the song. But, um, oh, I, I'm sorry, um. But yeah, so I got, I got bothered by Kenny drinking alone and... I told him too, like, dude, you need to chill, man. You should have just waited until, like, a weekend. You know what I mean? Because I'm free on the weekends. Like, I could have came over on a weekend. I could have kept an eye on him. You know what I mean? To make sure that he didn't overdo it. But it was beyond my control. Yo, I hate seeing you suffer But I did what I could and try to make it ass a little tougher Now shit's about to get a little rougher I shouldn't be tripping on this shit cause it was all self-inflicted Do us both a favor by keeping your distance Unless you wanna see me get a little twisted I'm done with this shit, bye Felicia So yeah, um, basically I was feeling uh, guilt-ridden, you know what I mean? Even though I know clearly it's not my fault Cause all the stuff that that's going on with him was, as I said, self-inflicted, you know what I mean? Because, again, he doesn't know how to manage his anger, you know what I mean? His anger gets the best of him, you know, so. Um, yeah, I, I shouldn't be feeling bad, but, I mean, I, you can't help but feel bad because, hey, that's that's your homie, you know what I'm saying? Come get me, motherfucker, if you want JD. Fuck on my head now, you ain't dragging me down. Hell to the nah, 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 nah. Come get me, motherfucker, if you want JV. Fuck on my head now, you ain't dragging me down. Hell to the na 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 na. Refuse to sit here to tell you some tales. Can't help but feel like I failed. I gotta leave you behind on this trail. I did everything that I could, but still in your eyes, I could never do good. Again, just more or less me feeling uh, guilt-ridden about it, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I felt like, as a friend, I did fail him, you know what I mean? 
And um, I still kind of feel like that to this day. But like I said, um, part of me doesn't because part of me realizes that, yeah, you know, he, he brought this on himself. You know what I mean? His his anger and his misery, his toxic behavior. It was, you know what I mean? He, It's all his doing, you know what I mean? So um, I'm slowly but surely getting, getting over all this, you know what I mean? Um, ready to move on. And uh, this song definitely does help. It's a reminder for me to to let me know, like, hey, look, man, don't worry about it. You did everything you could, but it wasn't enough, man. You, so you have nothing to be ashamed of. Can't understand why you so bad out of shape. Why you got a fire shot with all your misguided hate. It's like I broke a bond with a symbiote. And now it's chosen you as this fucking host. Raging out of control, you be told. I can see it in your eyes. You institutionalize in your own self-pity. And so, um, you know, I'm a bit of a comic book geek, as you guys can probably tell from that line where uh, I said that um, it feels like I broke a bond with a symbiote and now it's chosen you as its fucking host. Uh, because I felt like uh, that was a perfect representation of how I felt when I was dealing with, with, with my demons and how, I'm, how I feel like I, I've overcome uh, most of my demons. And I feel like as I did that, my demons were looking for like a new host, you know what I mean? Just like a symbiote. Um, it was looking for a new host and it decided to choose him, you know what I mean? And fuck with him and also fuck with me at the same time by fucking with him, you know what I mean? Because like I said, I was trying to be there for him, trying to help him, but then he was raging against me, you know what I mean? And using and just releasing his anger towards me, you know what I mean? Pretty much like, like, like that feud between um, Spider-Man and, and uh, Eddie Brock, you know what I'm saying? When Eddie Brock... Uh, gets the symbiote from Spider-Man. Very, very similar situation, which I thought was uh, it was it was poetic justice to work that in there. Yeah, I've lost some sympathy. Unjustified is your empathy. You're so empathetic. Should not push me away. You gonna live to regret it. Enjoy your segregation. I hope it ain't a permanent vacation. Feel free to hit me when you finally release your aggravation. Cause I'm so fucking done with my agitation. Come get. So that was basically an, an, an attempt to uh, end the song on a high note by basically saying, "Hey, look, if you wanna reconnect, you wanna uh, reestablish this this uh, friendship. The door is open, but before we can reestablish this this friendship again, before we can pick up from where we left off, um, you need to get your shit together for one." And two, you need to learn how to better manage your, your anger, your uh, temper. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. So, I haven't completely given up on him. I'm not completely walking away. Um, it's just, right now, I'm keeping the uh, distance between us until he gets his shit together and he gets himself under control. So, uh, yeah. That's pretty much it. Let's get this last hook out of the way and then we'll close the video. Motherfucker, if you want JB. Fuck with my head now, you ain't dragging me down. Hell to the na 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 na. Come get me, motherfucker. If you want JB, fuck with my head now, you ain't dragging me down. Hell to the na 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 na. Come get me, motherfucker. If you want JB, fuck with my head now, you ain't dragging me down. Hell to the na 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 Come get me Motherfucker if you want JB Fuck with my head now You ain't dragging me down Hell to the na 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 I love that final hook because it's got that classic, you know, fade away, you know what I mean, where the volume drops off, you know what I mean? Uh, Hail Mary is a classic joint, did the same thing, I think, and um, so I felt like it was appropriate to do that. Uh, kind of tricky to do, uh, what, it, what, what, what I find that works, and I know, and I kind of got this method from um, Most Def, because I've seen him do it. Uh, what it is, when, when you want to fade out your, your hook, what you want to do is, as you're singing the hook close up to the mic to project, if you want it to fade out, you kind of got to like slowly but surely back away from the mic you know what i mean and that's what gives you that that fade out effect you know what i mean it's it's kind of tricky to do you know what i mean that was my first attempt at it it's it was kind of rough but i think the more i do it though the better i'll get at it just it depends on, on these uh on the beats that i use
So who knows how often I'll be doing something like that. So uh, yeah, but anyway, guys, that was uh, Ain't Dragging Me Down. And uh, now now you know the whole uh, backstory as to what led me into writing this song and recording this song and getting it out there. Uh, like I said in past videos, both music and YouTube are great forms of therapy. You know what I'm saying? To get shit off your chest. And um, so yeah, that's why I choose music and YouTube as my outlet, you know, for to express myself. You know what I mean? Because I don't believe in keeping things bottled up. You know what I mean? Because <clears throat> I look at keeping your feelings and your emotions bottled up like holding a grudge. It just eats, it just eats away at you. You know what I mean? It's that negative toxic energy that just eats away at you inside. You know what I mean? And it's better to just project and let it out. That way you can just wash your hands of the whole thing and move on. You know what I mean? Um, so... Yeah, that's basically why why I do music and why I do YouTube. And, um, yeah, I think that pretty much sums it all up. So, with all that being said, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this first episode of Method to the Madness. Um, if you did and you're new here, uh, hopefully you'll consider subscribing to my channel. I would very much appreciate that. Um, if you're one of my regulars that's been rocking with me up until this point, first of all, thank you very much. And also to, to the newbies, I'm sorry, I don't want to be rude, but to the newbies, if you do subscribe to my channel, welcome and thank you for subscribing i appreciate that and to my regulars you guys know the drill by now if you like what i'm doing here and you want to see more uh be sure to hit that thumbs up leave a comment down below and um yeah all that fun stuff and until the next one guys uh it's your boy jason jv saying y'all take care and i will catch you all later peace